Drafting views are two-dimensional views which document your construction techniques. If you know that the drafting views that you create should be in each and every project, then those drafting views should be brought into your project template. On the other hand, if you think that that drafting view might only be used every other project, every third project, don't bring it into your project template. It can always be brought into your project template at a later time or into your projects at a later time. Personally, what I like to do is not draw inside of a drafting view in our project templates. If I know that a drafting view needs to be done, I like to do that while working on a project. That way it can be charged to that project and paid for by our clients. As a result of that, when I create my first template for a company, typically I don't have any drafting views inside of that template. I like to wait until the first project is done, go into that first project, review any of the drafting views that have been created inside of it, once I know that those drafting views look good and those are going to be our standard details in the future, then I'll reach into that project and then insert in from that project into the template the drafting views that I want to select. This is the process that I use to do that. Underneath the Insert tab on the ribbon, you'll see a button called Insert from File. After selecting Insert from File, select Insert Views from File. It's called insert views from file because it's a drafting view that we're inserting. In this case, we're going to look for our infinite skills project. This project's in the folder on our desktop. So I'm going to move my cursor up and next to look in, I'm going to select on the drop down menu and then pick the desktop. Now I'm going to go into our working files folder and find that infinite skills project. Select on open. The Insert Views dialog box will display. Now we need to put a check mark next to each of the views we want to reside inside of our template. In this case, I'd like to bring in anything related to handrail and staircases, as well as the general notes, which I typically place in many of our projects. So put a check mark next to Drafting View Structural General Notes. Put a check next to Stairs. Also, put checks next to Drafting View Pipe Handrail Enlarged and Drafting View Pipe Handrail. You'll also notice that schedules are another kind of view that you can bring into your template. In this case, move down here and select on Structural Framing Schedule and Schedule Structural Column. This will bring those schedules into our Revit template. These schedules would be blank if we would open them up because in the Revit template, none of these structural framing or columns have been created inside of a Revit project. Whenever you start a Revit project based off of this template, these schedules will begin to fill in with the appropriate information associated with such things as framing and columns. Move your cursor down and select on the OK button. By doing this, it's bringing in those schedules. It's also bringing in each of those drafting views you'll get this Duplicate Types dialog box when you try to do this. It's going to tell us that it wants to bring in some families from those drafting views into our Revit template. And do we want to duplicate the types of these families inside of the Revit template? Unfortunately, it sort of forces us to do this. As a result of this, if we want to bring in these drafting views, we do have to select on OK. But it is possible to come back and purge these out if for some reason we don't want to have these duplicate types inside of our template. So select on OK. This could take a few seconds. It could take a few minutes depending on how many different drafting views you selected with check marks next to them. Once the views are brought in, you might get a warning message. Don't worry about the warning message for right now. Essentially, it's saying that this Revit family has been renamed to a different name. And that's okay in this case. So just select on the X. Now we have these drafting views inside of our Revit template. And in the future, whenever we start a new project, these drafting views will now be available on the list under the project browser. Now, depending on your project browser organization, it may say drafting views, and you can expand it out to see drafting views. If you see question marks, keep clicking the question marks until you see detail. In this case, I'm going to click on the little plus sign that was next to the word detail. And here we can see each of the drafting views with their original drafting view name. 
If you want to rename it, you can right click on the name of the view and then rename it. But in this case, I like the way that it's named. So I'm just going to click out here in space to get out of this dialog box. So the thing to remember about drafting views is that for the most part, I like to leave them out of my Revit templates unless I know that in each and every project, we have the same condition reappearing again and again and again. If I was doing a type of construction where we always had the same stair conditions, then I'd bring that stairs drafting view into my Revit template. If I knew that this stair condition was not going to happen in each and every one of my projects, I would leave it outside of my Revit template and then come up here to insert and insert from file and then bring in those drafting views into my project environment from other projects where I know that it had already been created.